My homage to the gem of the Supreme Buddha. The Buddha is my refuge every day. My homage to the gem of the Supreme Dhamma. The Dhamma is my refuge every day. My homage to the gem of the Supreme Sangha. The Sangha is my refuge every day. My homage to the Supreme Triple Gem. The Triple Gem is my refuge every day. Sadhu, Sadhu. Sadhu Namo Buddhaya Dear meritorious friends We were lucky to born in the human world We had a birth as humans. Dear meritorious friends, we met the Supreme One, the Lord Buddha, the greatest one. Dear meritorious friends, Lord Buddha explains regarding the endless journey of ours like this Lord Buddha says when our fathers are dying in our cycle of births the tears came out of from our eyes are mightier than the water of the four oceans. When our mothers were dying, the tears came out from our eyes, are mightier than the water of the four oceans. Likewise, we are having an endless journey, having a birth and a death. Once Lord Buddha says, Dear disciples, it is so difficult to find out the beginning of this cycle of birth. It is so difficult to find out a starting point. This journey is having a so long way. It is so long we have had births many times. It is countless. We were having a birth in the hell in the animal's world, in the ghost world, in the human world, in the divine worlds. At that time we are having a birth and then again a death. After the death, again a birth. As we had a birth, then we have to die. So this is the journey that we came. Still, we are going on that. Lord Buddha explains this very nicely. Lord Buddha says, when we were born as chickens. 
the people cut the throat to kill at that time the blood we shed is mightier than the water of the four oceans and when we had birth as pigs as goats as deers when the people cut the throat with an idea to kill the blood we shed from the throat is mightier than the water in the four great oceans so such much endless moments endless times we have met the death lord buddha said this cycle of birth is endless but a lord buddha is appearing in this world to help the innocent beings who are suffering from aging and death who are having an endless journey in this cycle of birth to find a way to show a way to have a release to have a freedom so lord buddha teaches us the supreme way the middle way the middle path to have the supreme liberation out of compassion lord buddha is doing that out of compassion for 45 years the greatest sage our lord buddha preached a great teaching with an idea to bring the happiness which is everlasting for the sufferings dear meritorious friends when lord buddha is doing this great service to the world sometimes he went hundred yojnas hundred miles thousand miles on foot with an idea to help innocent ones those who are suffering the meritorious friends one day lord buddha went to a city called alav in that city there was a temple the name of the temple was agalav temple so lord buddha went to that city and while lord buddha was going near by that temple the people of that village invited lord buddha to be in the temple 
and to accept their arms. Then that compassionate Lord Buddha accepted the invitation of those people. And Lord Buddha went to the temple. The people prepared the arms for the Mahasangha, including the Lord Buddha. And Lord Buddha, out of compassion, accepted that arms. After having the arms, Lord Buddha did a discourse with an idea to make even one free from this endless journey. That day, a girl, while going to the father's works place, her father was a weaver, a person who is making clothes. That girl also has seen a very big crowd has gathered in the temple while she was going to the father's working place, weaver's shed. So she thought to go inside and see what is happening there. The meritorious friends, this 16 years old young girl went into the temple and went through the crowd and saw the Lord Buddha was there. And she was so happy. When the Lord Buddha was doing the discourse, she sat down and listened. That day, Lord Buddha did a nice discourse. It is very good. It is so great. That day, Lord Buddha did a discourse on meditation on death. Lord Buddha taught the people how to meditate on death. Dear meritorious friends, if a person wants to be heedful, if a person wants to get rid of this suffering, Lord Buddha says he must develop the meditation on death. Every day and night, sometimes meritorious friends, when we talk about death, the people don't like. Why are you talking something which is very ugly? We don't like to talk about death. We don't like to talk about such a bad one. There are a lot of things which, we, which brings happiness. Why do you talk about death? Why do you talk about something bad? This is what the people are telling even today. But Lord Buddha said, if somebody does the meditation on death every day and night, or as much as he can, definitely he will have the freedom from all these sufferings. Day by day, he will be closer to the supreme liberation. Lord Buddha said like that. So that day, Lord Buddha taught the people gathered in the temple of Agalava, 
how to do the meditation on death. Lord Buddha told the people, oh dear meritorious disciples, I thought to teach you a meditation today, how to do that meditation. I am going to teach you about the meditation on death. It will give you much results. It will bring you the happiness. It will bring you the supreme liberation. So keep this meditation in your mind. And after going home, practice it diligently. Practice it every day as much as you can. Then you can face your death very bravely. Then when the death comes to you, you won't be so terrible. You won't be afraid to face the death. You will face the death very bravely as you know the reality. You will face the death very bravely as you practiced the meditation on death. And after that, after the death, you will be reborn in a divine world, if you, uh, if you couldn't achieve the arahantship. So dear meritorious disciples, the greatest sage out of compassion taught like this, dear disciples, you should think like this. The death is certain. It can come at any time. The life is uncertain. We don't know when we have to die. Sometimes the death can come tomorrow morning. Sometimes the death can come within a week. Sometimes the death may come to you after 10 years. Sometimes the death may come to you just now. So what you have to do is, dear merit meritorious disciples, you may think like this. Life is uncertain. But the death is certain. We don't know when the death is coming. We don't know how the death is coming. Sometimes we have to die unexpectedly. Sometimes we have to die having diseases. Sometimes we have to die meeting with an accident. So, dear disciples, the death is certain. The life is uncertain. So, what you have to do is you may recollect on death. You may practice this meditation at home. Then it will bring you much. It will bring you the supreme liberation. It will lead you to the supreme liberation. And 
when you go to the supreme liberation, when you attained the supreme liberation, there is no birth, therefore there is no a death. You will be freed from all sufferings. You can finish the endless journey you came having lot of sufferings. Lord Buddha taught this to those people. Dear meritorious friends, even today, if somebody wants to have the supreme liberation, if somebody wants to be heedful, if somebody wants to live without heedless, if somebody wants to live without being heedless, he must practice the meditation on death. So dear meritorious friends, everybody listened the discourse of the Lord Buddha that day. And after that, everybody went home. As usual, they started their works. They did their daily works, but nobody could practice the meditation except one. Who is that one? Dear meritorious friends, that little girl, the girl who is 16 years of age, went home, practiced this meditation on death every day and night. She tried her best to practice it. When she is going on the road, she recollect the meditation. She remembered the words of the Lord Buddha. And then, when she is walking, when she is working, when she is doing something, she remembered to practice that meditation. So what happened? She practiced it for three years. And then after three years, again the compassionate one, the Lord Buddha came to that city and came to the same temple with 500 monks. That day also the people invited Lord Buddha to accept their arms. Lord Buddha accepted their invitation and had arms in the temple. After the arms, Lord Buddha did a discourse. At that day also, that little girl, now 19 years old, came to the same place. But how? She was so busy that day. She knew that Lord Buddha has come while going to the father's place. And when she went to father's place, father said, daughter, today I have a lot of works. I need to give this cloth today itself. So help me. Now, she is in a dilemma. She is in a big trouble now. She wants to go to the temple to listen to the Dhamma of the Lord Buddha. And also she wanted to do the father's works. What she did was she worked hurriedly 
and completed, finished the father's works and went to the temple. Lord Buddha knew that she is coming. Then she came. As usual, she went through the crowd and went to the front of the Lord Buddha and sat down, paid homage. At that time, Lord Buddha was asking a question from the girl. Lord Buddha asked, daughter, where are you coming from? Then she said, I don't know. At that time, dear meritorious friends, the people who gathered in the temple said like this, See, this little girl, without any fear, speaking with the Lord Buddha like that, she is not having any honor about Lord Buddha. She is talking, talking with Lord Buddha like that. She is acting very badly. The people discussed like that. But Lord Buddha asked the second question also. Lord Buddha asked, Dear daughter, where are you going? Then the little girl said, Lord Buddha, I don't know. Then for the second time also, dear meritorious friends, those people shouted, how do you say like this? How do you speak like this with the Lord Buddha? Aren't you having any shame? Don't you afraid? Why are you talking like this with such a great man? such a great one. But without considering those things, Lord Buddha, out of compassion, asked the third question. What Lord Buddha asked? Lord Buddha asked, Dear loving daughter, don't you know then the meritorious friends, what would be the answer? That little girl said, I know. At that time also, the people shouted like that. Lord Buddha asked the last question also. What would be the question of the Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha asked, Do you know, daughter? Then the loving daughter said, I don't know. Then also the people shouted at that girl saying, aren't you having any shame? Aren't you having any shy? How can you talk with the Lord Buddha like this? Then, to make the people aware, Lord Buddha asked from the daughter like this, Dear loving daughter, when I am asking you, where are you coming from? You said, I don't know. Why is that? Then the daughter said, that weaver's daughter said, Dear Lord, 
you know that I am coming from home. But instead of knowing that, you asked something else from me. You asked from me, daughter, you were having a uh, previous birth. Then you had a birth in the human world. You were asking Lord Buddha where I am I was coming from, where I was having the birth at previous time. As I don't know where I was last time, I said I don't know. Lord Buddha, that is why I said I don't know. Then the Lord Buddha said, with much happiness, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu three times. And again asked, okay dear daughter, then answer me this. Please explain me this. For my second question, when I am asking you, where are you going? Why did you say, I don't know? Then the daughter said, Dear Lord Buddha, you know that I am going to my father's working place, weaving shed. Instead of knowing that, you wanted to know something else. You wanted to know that I am going, where I am going after the death of mine. When he, where is my next birth? As I don't know where I am going after the death, I said I don't know. I didn't have any idea to trouble you. I didn't have any idea to speak with you, making you something shame. I didn't have any intention to trouble you, but I said the truth. As I don't know I, where I am going after the death, I said you, I don't know. See how nicely this little girl is answering for the questions of Lord Buddha. Then the Lord Buddha is asking, Dear loving daughter, I asked you, don't you know? Then your answer was, yes, I know. Then, daughter, tell me, why did you answer like that? When I am asking, don't you know, you said, yes, I know. Then the daughter said, Lord Buddha, you asked me whether you know that you are dying. Then, as I know that I am dying, as I know that I am subjected to death, I said, I know. I know I am dying. I know the death is certain. The life is uncertain. That is why Lord Buddha I said, I know, because I know I am dying. Then the Lord Buddha, for the third time also, dear meritorious friends, said, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. To appreciate 
that young girl's answers. Then Lord Buddha finally asked, Okay, dear daughter, please tell me for my fourth question, for my fourth question, you answered like this. When I was asking you, dear daughter, do you know? Then you said, I don't know. Can you explain that? Why did you answer like that? Then the little girl said, Yes, Lord Buddha, you know, I answered. I don't know when you asked, do you know? Lord Buddha, you asked me whether you know the day of your death. Do you know when you are dying? As I don't know the day or the moment that I am dying, I said I don't know. I frankly told the answers. I didn't have any idea to trouble you. I didn't have any idea to bother you. Frankly, I said what I know at that time also. The Lord Buddha, the compassionate one, the greatest one, said sadhu three times with an idea to appreciate the answers of the little daughter. At that time, Lord Buddha, with much happiness, uttered a stanza like this. On the Bhuto Ayang Loko Tanuketta Vipassati Sakunto Jala Muttova Appo Saggaya Gachati. Lord Buddha said, Blind is this world. The people in this world are blind. Here only a few possess wisdom. That means only a few people are having the wisdom to understand the reality of the world. So Lord Buddha said like this also, only a few like birds escaping from the net of a hunter, birds hunter, go to the realms of bliss, go to the divine worlds. Only a few people, few beings who understand the reality of this world going to the supreme liberation, going to the divine worlds after their death. Most of the people, because of unwise of theirs, again joined, again joined the journey of cycle of birth, again join the endless journey which is suffering. Why is that dear friends? As they are not wise enough to understand the reality of this world. 
dear meritorious friends, among that huge gathering, that girl only could understand this big reality. After hearing this stanza, she entered the path which brings her the supreme liberation. That means, she became a stream entrant. She became a sotap and a disciple of Lord Buddha. You know, dear meritorious friends, when somebody becomes a stream entrant, Lord Buddha said, it is like this. Becoming a stream entrant is so great, it is a massive achievement. Lord Buddha explain about that achievement like this. One day, Lord Buddha took some drops of water and asked, Dear monks, which is bigger, the water in my hand or oh, the water in the four great oceans? Then the monks replied, Venerable Sir, Lord Buddha, the water in your hand is so small in amount but the water in the ocean is so great, countless, so mighty. Then Lord Buddha said, Dear Bhikkhus, if somebody becomes a stream entrant, a sotapan, a disciple of a Lord Buddha, the suffering that he rooted out is just like, is equal to the water in the great oceans and the suffering that he has to have in the future is the drops like this, very small. Lord Buddha said, if somebody becomes a stream entrant, he has only seven births maximum. Sometimes if he develops diligently the path, he can finish this endless journey this life itself by becoming an arahant. Sometimes, if he becomes a non-returner, he will have another birth in the heaven, in the Brahma worlds only. There he will pass away and have the supreme liberation. And if he becomes a once-returner, then he will come to this sen sensual world once and then go to the Brahma world and will have the supreme liberation. If he goes seven births, then he has only those seven births only. There, after that seven birth, he will pass away and have the supreme liberation. Dear meritorious friends, that day in the city called Alav and at the temple called Agalava, that 19 years old young girl who practiced 
the meditation on death diligently, seriously, for three years could attain the path, could enter to the path becoming a stream entrant. So dear meritorious friends, she went home after the discourse. She went to the father's working place. At that time, father was sleeping. And to wake up the father, she closed the shuttle into his face accidentally that shuttle went hit into her his eyes and he when he wanted to remove when he tried to remove that shuttle from his eye the other end of the shuttle nugged at that little girl. Because of that hard shot, she died on the spot. Because of this sadness, the father said, only the Lord Buddha can help me. Therefore, I must go to that place where the Lord Buddha is. He ran to the Buddha and said the story. At that time, Lord Buddha told the same thing. Lord Buddha told the death is certain, the life is uncertain. Therefore, naturally, for a person or a being who had a birth, the death comes. In your daughter's death, there is no wrong from your side. You didn't have any intention to kill your daughter. Even your daughter didn't have any intention to hit your eye. Everything happened accidentally, without any intention. So don't worry about that. At that time, understanding the reality, the weaver said, to the Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha, I also want to free from this death. I also want to have the freedom from this endless journey. So please teach me the way to have the freedom. At that time, Lord Buddha, out of compassion, taught the Dhamma. Lord Buddha explained the reality of this life. Lord Buddha explained the dangerousness of this endless journey. Lord Buddha explained the importance of having the supreme liberation. At that time, the weaver asked from the Lord Buddha, Lord Buddha, please give me the ordination. Please let me become a monk. Out of compassion, dear meritorious friends, Lord Buddha, gave him the ordination. 
and also Lord Buddha gave him the higher ordination. Dear meritorious friends, following the Buddha's words, following the teachings of the Lord Buddha, after few days, that weaver who became a monk rooted out delusion, hatred, lust perfectly from his mind and became an arahant. And he found the supreme liberation by following the path. Dear meritorious friends, see, the daughter went to the Lord Buddha first. The daughter became a stream entrant. After some time she died. She had a birth in the divine world called Tusita. And because of the death of the daughter, the father went to the Buddha. And after hearing the teachings of the Lord Buddha, the father attained the ultimate liberation. Dear meritorious friends, how amazing the teachings of the Buddha is. How glorious the teachings of the Buddha is. If somebody practice the teachings of the Buddha diligently, respectfully, as much as he can, as much as she can, the results will be there definitely. They will be having the results definitely. So dear meritorious friends, still we are in the journey of cycle of births. We are having endless journey as we couldn't achieve that supreme state. So dear meritorious friends, now we have the teachings of the Lord Buddha. You can listen the teachings of the Lord Buddha. Therefore, you are so meritorious to hear the teachings of the Lord Buddha. Therefore, dear meritorious devotees, dear meritorious friends, don't be heedless. Be heedful and try to practice the path. Try to practice the supreme path which is taught by the Lord Buddha. You will be having the supreme liberation without any delay. But what you have to do is you have to practice it. Therefore, the merits we have gained by listening to the discourse of a Lord Buddha, by doing a discourse of a Lord Buddha, may all these merits help all of us to find the supreme liberation, to have the supreme liberation in the dispensation of Gautama Buddha itself. Sadhu, 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 Namo Buddhaya.